What is the ultimate McLaren? Is it the Speedtail, the Senna? It's a tough question and one that's about to get even more difficult to answer with the release of a brand new car that is arguably the most extreme McLaren ever made. This is the McLaren Elva, a new lightweight mid-engined two-seater open cockpit sports car that joins the Senna and Speedtail in the McLaren Ultimate series. The name, in case you're interested, comes from the Bruce McLaren designed McLaren Elva sports cars of the 1960s, essentially Group 7 McLaren race cars that were built by British race car maker Elva. But what is the purpose of the new Elva? I had a chat with global head of product management Ian Digman to learn a little bit more about the company's intentions for the car. So Ian, I guess the first question is, what is the Elva? So uh, this is new McLaren Elva. Um, this is using all of the pioneering technology that McLaren has as its fingertips, um, but actually follows in the footpath of um, the principles of all of the past open top sports cars that we had uh, in history, um, particularly the McLaren Elva um, that we have on the boulevard next to us here. It's a particularly uh, stunning car and I can definitely see the family resemblance. Now, I know you guys have got the Senna, you've got the Speedtail. How does this fit in with the rest of the range? So the McLaren Senna was deliberately created to be the ultimate track car. It's got incredible downforce. Um, it's raw, stripped out and focused for that ultimate lap. Um, alongside that, we've got the Speedtail, so our first ever Hyper GT. Um, central driving position, 1,070 PS, pioneering hybrid technology um, for immense straight line speed and refined comfort um, for, for long journeys. Um, but what we wanted to do with the Elva is design a car that was just there for the pleasure of driving, a car that didn't need a racetrack, didn't need a destination. So it's a true A to A car, a car that you just get in to drive for the fun of it. Now, whenever I see a car as kind of extreme looking as this, my instinct is that it's going to be powered by electricity um, or some kind of hybrid system. I'm guessing that this is none of those two things, is it? None of those two things. So, no, this is the uh, twin turbo 4 litre um, V8 um, that you would find in the McLaren Senna. However, for this car, we've managed to turn it up just a little bit more, um, 815 PS out of uh, that, that pure combustion engine. And presumably this is going to be a little bit less heavy than the Senna. So the Senna was about 1,200 kilograms, give or take. Um, this presumably, looking at it, weighs less? It does indeed, yes. If you take the windshield out, take the roof off, it will be lighter. So if you couple increased power with decreased weight, power to weight ratio is absolutely phenomenal on this car. If you then add on top of that the fact that you don't have as much downforce as you do on Senna, this is a really agile, fun, smile-inducing car. While it might be fun to drive, it does appear to have one obvious drawback. With no windscreen or windows, it seems to lack any protection from the elements, meaning it might be less than suitable for use in places where rainfall is abundant. But McLaren can supply an optional windscreen and, more impressively, they've also installed a high-tech virtual windscreen that turns the air against itself. So what the engineers have done here is that we've got the patented um, active air management system and th this is an evolution of McLaren's legendary ability to manipulate air with aerodynamics. So what we do is we take air in at the bottom uh, of the car and actually divert it through a series of vents and flaps back on itself to 130 degrees and then the air coming over as the front of the vehicle actually hits that and starts bending the air over the car and actually creates this bubble around the passengers. Very, very calm, refined environment. We could actually have this conversation at 70 miles an hour. It's that calm inside the car. So the air comes through the front, bends into a C shape and then hits. So this flap raises yeah. and then the air hits there, combines the two air streams together over the full car. That's incredible. What's the kind of operating range of, uh, of this system? So the, the speed? flap will raise at 30 miles an hour, um, which is where we believe it begins to become useful. And then it will operate effectively up to about 70 miles an hour. Um, above that point, um, the, 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 the boundary layer between the free flowing air and the stationary air just grows gradually and creates a little bit more of turbulence. So at that point, we'd probably recommend a helmet above those speeds. When the active air management system is inactive, the Elva uses the onrushing air not to protect the driver, but to increase cooling efficiency. 
The Elva includes two low temperature radiators mounted at the front of the car. These cool the oil in the 7-speed seamless shift transmission while also reducing the charge air temperature, allowing the engine to reach that astronomical 815 horsepower without the help of electric motors. Ian, there are some quite complex shapes along the profile of the car. I've noticed that the uh, mirrors here have got this little cutout section. You've got the door, which seems to be hollowed out, and then an intake back there. Um, what's going on along the side? So Everything with McLaren is um, everything for a reason. So the, the cutouts that you see are, are there deliberately to manipulate air a little bit further. Um, so what we've actually got feeding the radiators at the back of the car are three airflow channels. So you, you see the one at the top here, and that actually goes inside the door um, and feeds the high temperature radiators. The air that's coming in this direction is joined by the air that comes straight into um, these haunches here. And then finally, we actually have air that flows along the sill inside the vehicle to create those three elements combining all at the back here. So everything within the car has a purpose. You'll also find that the cutout here is deliberately shaped to allow the turbulent air from the wheels um, to join the um, side of the car to create less drag. Now let's talk about the exhaust. It looks like a work of art. You've got four tips there. Um, two quite close together and then a couple more facing in a different direction. What's the logic behind that? So you've got an engineering brain there already. So <laughs> the, 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 this is our Nirvana exhaust. Uh, engineers nicknamed it that because it just comes out with a perfect sound. So what happens because the um, two um, tips at the top of the car um, are close together so they um, liberate the high frequency noises. The ones that are further apart, lower down, they liberate the lower frequency um, sounds. So when you combine those together you get the absolute perfect exhaust sound. Because there is nothing between the top exit exhaust and the driver, you get that feedback of uh, the audio sensation straight into the driver. And then, interestingly, the ones that come out of the back of the car actually bounce the sound off the road and create a more bassy sound. All of that wrapped in a 3D um, titanium printed uh, surround. I'm expecting it to spit flames as well. They do. <laughs> All right, enough said. Um, now, presumably, this is uh, an active spoiler as well. Yep, so the car comes with um, active aero, um, full width um, spoiler um, as per um, 720. Um, this is optimised for this shape um, to allow um, downforce, drag reduction system, but it also works in harmony with that active air management system at the front to make sure the balance of pressure of the car is absolutely perfect. With less drag, more power and less weight to carry around than the 1200 kilogram Senna, the Elva's weight is currently unconfirmed, McLaren says the Elva will be very fast. It will manage 0 to 200 kilometers per hour or 0 to 124 miles per hour in 6.7 seconds. Top speed is also unconfirmed, but if it's anywhere near the Senna's 220 miles per hour VMAX, then given the fact that it has no windscreen, this might just be the closest thing many of us will get to the sensations provided by a Formula One racing car. The interior of the new Elva echoes the simplicity of the cars that came before it. The McLaren Elvas of old were simple, purposeful, beautiful, and the same could be said of this more modern interpretation. McLaren has tried to align the exterior design with the interior in an unusual way. In a nod to its great-grandfather, there is no clear demarcation between the Elva's bodywork and its cabin. The carbon fibre uses the same colour inside and out, and flows seamlessly from one space to the other, perhaps in a bid to help the driver and passenger feel more at one with the machine, less protected from the elements, and more connected to the road. The seats in particular are a work of art, with a new carbon fibre shell, optional six-point harness for track use, and seat bottoms that are slightly shorter than normal, allowing enough space in the footwell for driver or passenger to stand, making it easier to get in or out through those dihedral doors. The interior is quite interesting. It looks like you've got a leather seat there. Um, I'm not sure that's the best idea for an open top car. Is that the case? So this particular fabric is one of the range of fabrics that we offer our customers. This is um, an ultra fabric, which actually has got a neoprene base to it, um, so it is more appropriate for the weather. However, we offer it with a leather, um, which has been surface coated. Um, we also um, alter the stitching pattern on a car like this to cope with any water that might get into it. 
And what about mod cons? I mean, it's a stripped back car, um, but I do see an infotainment display there. Does it come with a stereo, anything like that? So yes, all mod cons, um, stereo system in there. Um, what was quite impressive is the way that we operate the air conditioning uh, in a car like this. So again, no windows, no roof. Um, the air conditioning is specially tuned for that situation. Uh, so we actually put all of the air con um, outlets a lot further down in the cabin so that as the air gets drawn out um, of the vehicle, it actually pulls the cold or hot air over the passengers, making it a bit more comfortable. And that doesn't escape because you've still got the kind of air curtain protecting the occupants, right? Absolutely correct, yeah. Right. And in terms of safety, <laughs> you know, God forbid something were to go wrong here, uh, what kind of protections do you have in place? So it was really important when we were designing the vehicle to make it as low and as sleek as possible. Um, so we actually um, use deployable rollover protection. So just above the uh, seats here, um, these elements just pop out in the event of an issue, um, protecting um, the occupants if the car were to roll over. And you've got a full suite of airbags. Absolutely, yes. So um, frontal airbags, side airbags uh, in the case of any issues. Do you need a helmet to drive this on the road? Or? You don't need one, no. The active air management system makes it perfectly comfortable. It will deflect bugs and rain. Um, some people prefer wearing a helmet. It deflects just... bugs too? Oh yes. Anything <laughs> that's in free flow air will, will get diverted. Uh, some customers will prefer a helmet for comfort and above 70 miles an hour we'd recommend wearing a helmet. Um, m much akin to riding a motorbike. Okay. Well it looks Fascinating, looks very fast. Um, I'm expecting that it doesn't come cheap. What's the price? Uh, so 399 units of this around the world, UK price starting at 1.425 million, including that. Okay, well, sign me up. I'll take three. Okay, guys, this is the McLaren Elva. They're taking deposits right now and it'll be available at the end of 2020. But move fast because they're only making 399. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Thanks, Ian. Where's the keys? <laughs> <laughs>